Hey guys, what is going on? This is The Script with Dr. Sam. I am Dr. Sam Rasool, and I'd like to welcome all you guys to episode one, where we're going to share with you health and wellness topics uh, in today's society and uh, tackle the issues at hand that seem to be uh, the challenges and obstacles for a lot of people, especially when it comes to health and wellness in today's society, specifically in the United States, but we're going to tackle it worldwide. And I am fortunate enough to be joined by my good friend and colleague, fellow entrepreneur, Asad. How's it going, guys? I'm Asad Shaloub, and I am, uh, I guess, here on, um, I feel honored to be with uh, Dr. Sam. Uh, we met not too long ago, and I've learned a lot from him, and I hope I can uh, bring some of these to the table into his first test podcast so we're I've, I've learned a lot i think that, that that's one of the lessons guys if i could pass along i mean this is going to be a tangent off of uh the topic at hand which we're going to tackle a little bit but uh i want to really uh share with you guys you really want to try to strive to surround yourself with people like Assad, um people that are like-minded people that are ambitious uh this i've had the fortune of getting to know both both him and his lovely girlfriend lauren uh <laughs> both are fantastic yeah entrepreneurs are uh, really, really, um, you know, just unbelievable human beings and um, humility is not lost on these two guys. So I really, really appreciate having a thought on the program. And I would love, you know, it's going to be great because we're going to be tackling the topic at hand today is going to be stress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lord knows we got stressed. Everybody's stressed out these Everybody's days. Everybody's got stress these days. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, aside, um, if, for those who don't know, um, you know, we're going to share with you guys uh, his Instagram um, name. So just my name and then S H A L. There you go. Asad Show. It's yeah, pretty easy. Spell it out for us. Uh, a S S A D and then S H A L. So, yeah, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, I changed. It's it's a lot better than what it was from before. So, guys, yeah, if you're not following out. this man, uh, definitely. And uh, for all the guys out there, be sure you're. you're, you're Watch your girlfriend if you follow this guy. <laughs> he's a very good-looking man. So um, you know he definitely. I'm flattered. I'm flattered. <laughs> he's definitely um, you know he practices what he preaches, and he is a true testament to someone who takes really good care of himself. Uh, he really prides himself on you know not only exercising diligently but eating right, yeah. and you know again tackling this topic we're going to talk right. about. It's if just, I if I have any kind of, I mean it is anecdotal. I haven't done any you know peer-reviewed journals or anything but you know I, I want to it's just I have uh, a lot of evidence from my own trials and errors about stress so I can I hope I can uh, add something that maybe you haven't heard before so. I think I think you can definitely I think that uh, you speak volumes from not only being a fitness guru but also an entrepreneur who right. started from you know from ground level and built mm -hmm. yourself up to where you are and the sky's the limit for right. you so um, but yeah, I think Asad let's said it. Get it. Let's, uh, let's get right into yeah, it. Um, get it. Stress uh, is the topic at hand, guys. I think you hear it all around um, every single day. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm stressed out. You know, I can't believe all the stress in my life. It seems to be a scapegoat. And Asad, how many right. times have you kind of looked at it and said, you know, you've kind of looked at it and you've scapegoated stress? Like, I mean, yeah, we could, we're, we're quick to just blame stress and or at least – we could be right that it is stress, but we don't go and tackle the underlying issues that are like causing that stress. We just kind of play it off and it builds and builds and builds. And then one day you just you you can't handle it anymore and you haven't built those coping like techniques. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's not like when you play it off. Oh, I'm so stressed. Okay, so what are you going to do about it? Exactly. And I think you said it best when you said coping. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's like going into battle. I use the analogy. Yeah. Like you're going into battle, and let's say you've got a, well, you've got a sword or a bow and arrow or mm -hmm. a gun or whatever your weapon may be, but you don't know your enemy. Right. And that's the number one thing, guys. I think the first and foremost we want to do is we want to address the enemy at hand, which is stress. But, however, it's not just avoiding stress. It's about knowing, identifying Okay. This 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 you know monumental uh, thing to overcome in our lives. Um, we want to address it first by identifying there are not just one but three types of stress. I think too many times in our society we kind of you know we defer to the emotional stress. Right. right? When you're talking about yes. this, uh, 
Um, but I think that you know this just as well as anybody else, especially in your fitness world. There are two other types of stress. Mm-hmm. You know, you have in addition to emotional, you've got structural and you've got chemical stress. Oh, yeah. and Everything's biological, psych- psychological and social. There There's a go. biopsychosocial model that works in pretty much every single facet of life. So every yeah. single facet of life. Absolutely. And, and I think that, uh, and here, here's the kicker guys. It doesn't matter if it's emotional, chemical or structural, your body doesn't care. Yeah. So you have a bucket. I use the analogy. You have a bucket every day and you know, you start pouring water into the bucket. So you've got like structural stress, pour some, pour some water in there, you know, chemical stress, pour some water. Well, if that bucket is already filled to the brim, and then you just have a little bit of emotional stress. Heaven forbid someone cuts you off while you're driving to work yeah. or you have someone who's pissing you off at the office or your home life isn't as uh, kosher as it should be. Yeah. You know, that can lead to <laughs> And I see Assad smiling over here. But um, even guys like Assad who have, you know, who take care of themselves to the utmost, you know, make oh, yeah. sure they watch what they put in their bodies. You have to, you know, telling someone that's why I, I, it really bothers me when physicians when I have patients tell me that physicians tell them don't stress. Yeah. Uh, that's it's like saying don't breathe. Like exactly. it's, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, it's, you have to realize that stress is going to be, it's, it's going to happen to you, but it's what we like the, the, as we, we said before, the coping mechanisms that we, you know, develop along the way is, uh, is what's most important. Not, like trying to like avoiding is, you know, you're just brushing it under the rug and it's going to build up and you're not going to be able to, when a truly huge stress like event happens in your life, you're not going to know how to handle it. So absolutely. I think that that's, it's, he can't, you know, it's funny because Asada said it now like twice and I (laughs) think she would say it 200 more times because a lot of people don't get it because it's not about the fact of like all these little stresses are going to build up. It's about the fact that you're almost like, inherently your tolerance people are like oh my tolerance is more no what happens is you're you're indirectly um becoming incapacitated to be able to handle it's stress management is what we're yeah. talking about yeah. here guys because you're always going to have stress in this world um, oh, regardless yeah. of how well you eat to how well you're structurally inclined um taking care of your biomechanics people that do yoga and of course people to handle their stress better by doing meditation there are going to be elements to come in your life it's how you handle these stresses is going to be the biggest uh, thing and for a lot of the U.S. population, unfortunately, um, you know, Assad and I were just speaking about this part uh, before. You know, a lot of people unfortunately are looking to the pharmaceutical right. medication, Resort, like resorting straight to those uh, pills. <laughs> exactly. You know, there is not like it's uh, it's not the way out. You know, it's definitely um, something we have to. That's a, as we said, a whole other podcast that we could record. So yeah, but it's it's it's. It's absolutely insane when you hear the numbers, you know, guys. And uh, the biggest thing is, I mean, the, the numbers that jump off the page of me. You know, yeah, you have a huge. you have one third of the U.S. Pop, U.S. adult population that is taking a drug to combat stress daily. That's I mean, just how many millions? Yeah, um, over a hundred million. Over a hundred million. You're yeah. talking about over a hundred million people that are taking a drug daily to combat, you know, stress. Right. And then, you know, if you want to take it a step further, you have seventy percent of the U.S. adult population that is currently taking at least one medication daily right. and the top three, you know, you can, what would you guess will be the top three is that? Well, are you, medication meaning you can only get it through prescription? Through or? prescription. Yeah. So like an antibiotic. Mm-hmm. Well, like a generality, oh. generality, like, so you're, you're, you're. Antibiotic, yeah, antibiotic, uh, pain relief. I, I mean, I guess yeah. there's that opioid, a huge opioid, opioid, opioid yeah. Pain. And then I don't know. Putting me on the spot. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay, well, so antibiotic, think. opioid, and uh, I don't even. Now that I think about it, I don't. Well, you're a that, happy guy, so you wouldn't ever think about this one. So. Oh, like like actual. Oh, antidepressant. Okay. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So like, and, and and when you have like uh, you know you have someone here like Assad who really I mean like that's why he stressed to all of our patients and he stresses to his clients and everybody in our our families too. It's, it's vitally important to find things that make you happy. That's why exercise is so important, you know, the release right. of natural Oh, man. We, that's, yeah, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> that's another podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can talk about, yeah. you know, you're talking about like the release of endorphins that way and naturally, yeah. but the unfortunate part about it is that not too many people are walking around, whether it's a reaction to the medication they're currently taking, but they're, you know, they're depressed. Mm-hmm. And the, the prescriptions for antidepressants are getting out of control. 
I mean, it's yeah. unfortunate. You you know, these these doctors that are out there, a lot of them are great physicians, but you know, their backs against the wall, and they're having to see more and more patients just to make ends meet. Right. And then you just throw pills at the problem. Throw pills at the problem. Yeah. You said it best. So, yeah, that's another thing. Is like medication, just like anything. I mean, like gunpowder was made. Or TNT and stuff like was was made to like clear rocks, but then we, they're like, oh, we could use this to, you know, as a weapon. Mm-hmm. So same thing with medication. It was made with good intentions, mm-hmm. but it became, uh, you know, uh, a huge money maker. Um, you know, it's just the, uh, it's just conspiracy after conspiracy on the big in the pharmaceutical companies, and it's just like, but the the main thing that I'm trying to say here is that medication is a supplement. It's not the the solution. It's not just you can take that by itself and it's going to help. It's just something that's going to be able to, like, you take the medication in order to go and find the coping me- like mechanism. This is why I have guys like Assad on the show. And it's funny because, uh, you know, people always, you know, do you always, again, I go back to surround yourself with people that are striving to better. I mean, he's hit the nail on the head. I mean, you know. It, it, and that's the biggest thing, guys. You don't need to have initial core after your name to justify, you know, do your own research to right. it, you know, and, and guys like Assad. Investigative did, journalism. That's there what you it is. Go, go exactly. find out for yourself. Don't listen to anybody except for yeah. your own research. So. There you go. I'm, I'm sitting across from a man who is the Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he said it best, though. I mean, listen, we're not anti-medication here. Both yeah. speaking here. I mean, medication should be used. As it works, said. but it it's works. but it's, it's not by its by itself. It's mm-hmm. it's a, it becomes the you know that's where the addiction comes in. It and, does because yeah. it becomes a crutch. And I think Assad said it best. He talks about like you know it's a supplement to basically yeah. to find the solution. I think he said it best. That was right. beautiful. And I and I and I'm gonna steal that thing okay. from you. Supplement to find the solution. I gotta go copyright it. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna, he's gonna copyright that, and then he's gonna yeah. be like, "Gosh, you stole that." Send me a check. <laughs> but yeah. that's the biggest thing guys i mean i think that he said it best i mean we're, we're we're we are handicapping ourselves by just looking at medication to resolve an issue whereas what does medication actually do most medications out there block natural biomechanical or biofeedback receptors right. from doing their jobs well how do you think advil or tylenol work it they're actually blocking blocks the reuptake of the pain. Uh, yeah yeah the pain receptors so that the, your body doesn't adhere to the pain right. You don't recognize the pain anymore. It didn't resolve. You, you, you don't. I always tell this to my patients: you don't stop having. You don't have a headache because you're Advil deficient. Yeah. You know, you know, like I don't have enough Advil. That's why I'm having right. a headache. No. So Advil doesn't resolve anything. However, is use use you know incrementally. You know, in increments, um, can it be beneficial? Absolutely. Right. But as Assad said it best, it's supplement to the solution. You really want to find the root cause. So going back to what we were talking about with stress. Um, you know, it is, and of course, we talked about the top three medications that are being prescribed in the in the side of that, yeah. opioids, antidepressants, antibiotics. And the biggest thing, you know, the opioid epidemic, even if you are hiding under a rock, you've most likely heard about this. The Somebody opioid already, epidemic yeah. is just out of control and, you know, more and more people are being affected. But oh, yeah. The, the, the alarming number, guys, is that, you know, when the United States makes up 5%, a shade over 5% of the world's population, yet we consume 50%, you know, of the medication around the world. It's crazy. It's insane. I mean, we yeah. consume 70% of the pain pop, of the pain pills, the pain pills. This, yeah, they, they, this goes way beyond like just the face value. It's, it's something just inherently wrong with our, with the corporations and, and it's just the access is too easy. I don't know. It's, it, it's you know it hits home because like my dad is a, a doctor and you know I've always he he's so good at like not doing what most physicians would resort to so uh, but like having a bad like it sucks because like it, it, like the small uh, like pe- amount of people that ruin it for the good doctors you know what I mean like they, so it's yeah. There are great doctors. I think yeah. Asad said it best. His father is one of them. Um, there are fantastic medical doctors right. out there. Unfortunately, what's happening is even the good medical doctors are, you know, being pushed up against the wall because 
unfortunately with and we can talk about this in a different pod, pod, uh, podcast about the you know with the with the monopoly that the insurance companies mm-hmm. are creating and it's just you know they're they're making it more and more difficult yeah. for practicing physicians yeah. regardless of what your specialty is whether you're a medical doctor I mean, or a DO, a PT, or a physical therapist they're making it more and more difficult yeah. to get reimbursed for services so you're having to see more patients with less time Jam them in, get them in. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is turning into like not it's crazy. Like, and people are like, livestock, it's yeah. cattle. You know. So, I mean, I'd be in line. It's oh, you know, t- talking about antibiotics. So, you know, I, uh, I just the you know a few months ago, I asked my dad to prescribe me a Z pack because that was like you know I had some kind of tonsil thing, and I'm just sitting there. You know, I had you know antibiotics most of the time. The ones that I need are zero dollars. Like just if you have insurance and you're the lucky one, you it doesn't break the bank but i'm you know i'm a curious guy all over here people's conversations and people are damn near the, on the verge of tears hearing about their the price ch- like somebody said oh last week you know last week this was 30 dollars. why is it 300 today it was and it was the span of a week it's like oh because the uh, insurance has changed or the the policy changed and nobody was told or whatever and maybe these people need it for their like life so okay so yeah kind of going on a tangent but it's just the people playing with people's lives Mm -hmm. in the pharmaceutical it's not even just the actual pill that we're talking about it's the you know just the just the blatant you know uh, controversy that surrounds you know the business aspect of pharmaceutical drugs too so there's it's just it's crazy because some people i i it's I'm like at a loss. It's it's just so depressing. Like I, uh, because people do, as I said, like there are people out there that like rely on these drugs, and it's not because they're addicted. It's just because like their life. Like some people are on Nexium for life. You know what I mean? It's not just because they're you know they just need it to to live. So these people that can't afford it, what? So they just gonna end up dead because of somebody who just decided to change like the policy. You know what I mean? So. That's uh, unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I think Asad says it best. I mean, he's tapping onto a topic that we can discuss. Of course, in another podcast. <laughs> so, what is that like? I five think, different podcasts. I, I, now? I think we started. We, we get episode two through six already. So yeah. lined up for you guys. But you know, it, it is crazy. I mean, you think about what the pharmaceutical companies and the insurance companies. This is why I'm feeling when you consider the conglom- conglomeration that has been occurring. And if you don't believe your healthcare in this country is being bought, then you're really walking through the jungle blindfolded. I mean, it's really, really difficult. I think it's time to open your eyes. And it's not just on you, you know, podcast listeners, but really start to challenge yourself to look out there. Because unfortunately, for a lot of people, they don't know the other options out there. I'm not here to say that you know, one technique or one type of doctor is superior to any kind of anybody else. Everybody is different. Start doing your own research. Right. What works for one may work much better for another. And one person, and you know, patient A could have little to no results, and patient B has extraordinary results. Don't compare yourself to somebody else. So, you know, there are so many natural alternative uh, healthcare techniques out there. Um, my specialty is, you know, chiropractic care. Uh, I also do enzyme nutrition, which is different than mm-hmm. nutrition. We'll talk about that a little bit later. And, you know, enzyme nutrition, we look at not just what you put in your body, but what you actually digest, absorb, and use. So I could tell you to eat avocados and, and certain, you know, foods that you know are good for you, but if you can't digest them, yeah, right. it's not doing anything yeah. for you. So going back to the topic at hand, guys, I mean, stress, the biggest thing you want to do is when you look at stress is how to combat it. Now, in my office, I tell patients all the time, I'm, I'm not silly enough to tell you not to stress, mm-hmm. but as Assad can tell you, you know, you want to try to limit the things you are capable of, you know, reducing. Yeah. So the biggest thing I tackle in my do you want to do you want to break these down into the three or what do yeah, you, yeah I think let's go with three. Let's start with number one. I mean, the biggest one that people, I mean, we'll put on the emotional on the back because yeah, I you know, I want maybe some people want to skip to this part so we can say yeah. in the description just if you want to flash, you know. Uh, you know, learning about, you know, the three top, just skip to this part. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. We go jump right to this part. Well, number one is going to be, I'm going to start with it because I'm a biomechanics guy and give you guys a little bit of background. I mean, I was a biomedical engineer and my bachelor's and my master's degree from uh, the University of Miami. Yes, 
from the U. <laughs> Flexing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a big, uh, a big uh, hurricane at heart. Um, but absolutely. I mean, I worked for a medical device company and my specialty was biomechanics right. when I was in school. So when my master's degree. So what I did when I made a transition into chiropractic school, I kind of kept that same realm. And so biomechanics really, really hits home for me. So the first thing we want to discuss is stress type number one, structural stress. Mm -hmm. So Asad, you're an athlete. You yeah. played uh, what sports? Uh, well, I started with soccer, football for you uh, non-American. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I had to choose between soccer and basketball in, in high school. So I did I did basketball, football, and lacrosse uh, for basically as far as, as long as I could remember. But football was my main sport and i'll tell you what there was a lot of structural stress in, in football that's for sure i'm uh, as you guys if you guys can't tell already i'm sitting across from a superhuman here who played every single sport I mean. <laughs> well the, yeah my my school you know we weren't lucky enough to have the bodies uh but we had uh we had heart so we a lot of us were multi-sport athletes you don't hear that very much you know being varsity in in three sports you know what i mean but uh, we had a little small private school in Vero Beach, and we just, you know, it was like the same guys playing all the same sports. It was pretty fun, but uh, yeah, it's. Um, but it takes its toll yeah, on your body. All it did, yeah, you know. for sure. I can, you know, I have some injuries that'll probably never fully heal from from that those sports, and mm -hmm. I couldn't even imagine, you know, going on to the collegiate and, uh, and you know NFL or anything like that, the pro sports. Well, that's um, why I think a lot of the guys, I mean, you look at like these NFL players, a lot of them have, um, you know, there's not one NFL team that doesn't have, you know, like I'm, of course, I'm going to be a little biased here, but there's not one NFL team that doesn't have a chiropractor on staff. Now. Right. I mean, chiropractic sure. care has become, I mean, synonymous. I, I have the fortune of actually having some clients that are professional mm -hmm. uh, football players and professionals in other sports. Um, several. I've gotten no from the collegiate level. Right. So whenever they're in town, they've come back to pay me a visit. They are the, the most humble people ever. I mean, they love what we do. And I mean, they share with me all the time. If it wasn't for chiropractic care, I would be able to do what I do on a weekly, monthly, yearly basis. So, right. you know, structural stress going back to, you know, our example of our super, superhuman athlete here aside, um, you, you played for years. So, yeah. I mean, you sprained an ankle or two. I oh, yeah. yeah. Rotator cuff, ankle, bat. I mean, I, was given the diagnosis, you know, this goes up your alley, sixth grade, I was told, you know, with a scoliosis diagnosis that sports and heavy lifting was going to be very, very hard for me. So to the point of almost like saying, I would hear the, you know, I overheard the conversation with my mom and the doctor and they were just, she, he was just like, if you can, you know, shy him away from that stuff do that and so that, that, so yeah i mean i could see not to cut you off no, but like no, please, no. uh maybe it wasn't smart for me maybe it wasn't but like i would never give away those uh you know those memories but at the same token like you got, i gotta be smart about it too i can't just go in and and uh not be knowledgeable about injuries and and stretching and all that stuff so i would hope um you know, like you could shed some light on, on that part. Absolutely. I mean, that's, I think you said it best. I think, you know, first and foremost, guys, I think the side said it, you know, something that really perturbs me. Um, you know, listen, we have a lot of uh, physicians out there that have studied for years and uh, they do know the medical realm and the right. medical aspect of things. But, you know, a lot of times, like, this is why I tell patients, I mean, listen, take everything a, a physician tells you, regardless of the initials behind their name, um, and take it to heart, but understand that, you know, some of these athletes have come to me, you know, have completely like the psychological impact of being told you'll never play again, yeah. you'll never do this again. It's, it's and huge. sometimes like they have an opportunity, but you're killing their dreams. That's stress right there. That's stress right there. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, going back to it, you know, you, you want to try to give any type of, whether they're a weekend warrior athlete or collegiate or professional, any person who's trying to better themselves, you know, physically, emotionally, or psychologically, you want to give them hope, and that's a big right. thing. So, going back to it, you know, our examples with Assad, you know, definitely he's had his fair share. Yeah, of let's injuries. be the scientific. Let's be structural about this. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's basically, you know, when you have a sprained ankle, or mm -hmm. you have a like, you know, you do injury your rotator cuff, or you have an injury that doesn't rehabilitate 
properly. Now, I'm not right. saying that he didn't do anything. You know, you probably went through, a, you know, like regimen. Yeah. Or they told you to rest it or anything else. It's just hard when you're constantly, I mean, you're always expected to perform at always at 100%, no matter what shape you're in. We, I mean, we we were, ta- like, if you took off the tape, we would just unravel, basically. <laughs> like, that's, we were at a point where, you know, we had so much stress on us to perform that we had to uh, do whatever it took. Absolutely. So uh, there's that stress too. We always we're we're always going back to them. I feel like that's why emotional stretch stress is the uh, is the biggest one because that even during like the structural stress causes emotional stress. Everything I feel like is causes that uh, like that emotional stress somehow it kind of builds up into it i think i think yeah. that you have structural chemical stress and it's not that address it can actually build the emotional so not only are you dealing with the external i think that's a big, good, good point there it's not only the, the internal, internal it's the internal so the internal can it cause the external external can cause internal yeah so going back to it i mean structural stress so you have a sprained ankle or a knee injury or you know you pull a hip flexor yeah of course or you know groin pull as i see a lot of my athletes have or, you know, weekend warriors, especially we got New Year's is right around the corner. Yeah. So we got people that are going to be like, ooh, I got to get in shape. And, they and then they go hurt themselves. And they're going to hurt themselves. So if you don't heal properly, what you do is first and foremost, you compromise your body's biomechanics in itself. Right. And then you cause, a you know, a slew of compensations. So when it comes to stress, let's to go back to our, our main topic word here, whether it's structural, chemical or emotional. The number one response after you have a stress, regardless of which one it is, is your body's going to demand more nutrition. Right. So let's just say, let's use the example of a sprained ankle. You're playing you know, high school football, mm-hmm. you sprain your ankle, or you're jogging, or you started a new New Year's resolution, right. um, you know, and you're trying to get in shape, and you injure yourself, your rotator cuff and or your ankle. Well, the first thing your body does to try to heal itself is demand more nutrition. Mm-hmm. So then before any symptoms show up, now you may have pain, that's your only symptom, but before like the ramifications actually set in, it's going to try to heal itself. Right. So it's vitally important that you're getting the body's right nutrition at that time, if not more as, as important or more important than normal times. Yeah. So you're saying my coach saying rub some dirt on it wouldn't work? Um, I Unless I do, that dirt has some nutrients. <laughs> yeah. it really well. Eat the dirt. <laughs> it's not yeah. going to really help you. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a lot of times we do. I rub some dirt on and get back yeah. to the beginning. So, <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, you know, guys like guys like Assad here, you know, we have, you, know, you see them all the time. You see people that, you know, you don't have to be an uber athlete to really have to suffer from any kind. And when we say structural stresses, it's not just a sports injury. You know, how many of us, you know, how many people do you know, Assad, that have, you know, sedentary jobs? Yeah. Secretaries, sitting, you know, I sitting mean, like, accountants, lawyers. Yeah. That's crazy. Everybody. Yeah. I mean, even, uh, what is, I think trucking is the most sedentary job. Yeah, there is. absolutely. Truckers out there, I mean, you're talking about sitting for a long period of time. Yeah. People that drive, you do long commutes. Think about it, guys. If you're taking a long commute somewhere, if you're in the car for an hour each way. Right. And then you're going to a desk job, you know, and, and, and nowadays we don't have eight hour jobs. I mean, if you do, you know, you know hats off to you. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people are working those extra hours. I mean, you're talking right. about nine hours, 10 hours oh, on yeah. top of two hours of commuting, one, two work, the one from work. You're talking about 11, 12 hour day, you're sitting. No, and, yeah. you know, I mean, not to scare you guys, but, you know, in 2014, London University did a study and the topic of the article published was sitting is the new smoking. So, yeah. you know, they were showing how the effects of sitting are actually worse for your body than smoking. I mean, how many times do we, you know, well, I mean, is that a correlation or causation thing like where it's I mean, can you clarify that kind of? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 basically the um, it's basically the uh, the 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 ramifications of all this symptomatology that occurs. Uh-huh. And because the biggest thing when you guys think about sitting is the posture that most people use. Right. And what it does is it puts like the biomechanical stress on the body, not to get too scientific, yeah. but you're talking about excess stress on your discs and your spine. Um, you're talking about shortening of muscles right. that should be limber. This is why a lot of people have difficulty getting into any kind of exercise regimen. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's why you have your New Year's, New Year's resolution folk two weeks, three weeks into the new year. And they're like, oh, I have so many aches and pains. I can't do this anymore. 
Well, you right. know, it's because you've trained. I mean, you got to peel back the layers of the onion. Mm-hmm. You can't start. You, you can't get up tomorrow and start running a marathon. Right. I mean, I I hope I wish I could do that, but I couldn't yeah. do that even. So going back to it, you know, structural stress is what it'll do to you. So structural stress, you know, it's, it's it could be what what I like to call, you know, something called anterior head carriage. Mm-hmm. So people that carry their head forward, oh, because yeah. I mean, wh- what what does everybody and their grandmother nowadays have? The phone. The phone. <laughs> there he is. Yes. Yeah, see. Yeah. That's, see. If 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 Assad was on Jeopardy, he'd say, "What is yeah. a smartphone?" <laughs> I, I wish I could say, "What is a smartphone?" <laughs> <laughs> I like, think they're turning us into, into dumb zombies, people, smartphones. Yeah. Yes. And most people are trapped in their phone. And I'll tell you what. I I mean, they, you know, you you guys, uh, you my podcast viewers, you probably heard of the term text neck. Text oh yeah. Neck. And tech snack, I'll tell you, it's going to keep me in As business I stretch for a while. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to keep me in business forever because I can't tell you how many people come into my office. We do a rehab session with them. We do everything under the belt. And then all of a sudden, like, we give them the best care. And they're like, I feel great. Oh, my God, doctor, thank you so much. And they go to the front desk and we're giving them some, you know, some healthy hints, uh, topics to take home with them, some activity they can enhance their life. And I look, I see them looking down at their phone. And their neck is flexed completely. Like they're looking at their phone, they're holding it to their chest or their stomach, and I'm like, um, that pretty much yeah. has nullified everything I just see you. We need like contact lenses. Like we're gonna become terminators and just <laughs> have the text like in our eyes and stuff. And so hopefully maybe it's coming. In the <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's coming. In Somebody the please make that. Yes. <laughs> but that's the biggest thing. I think that these smartphones. I mean, you know, they talk about also the, the thumbs with all the texting oh, we're yeah. doing with kids with the video games. I feel like I have arthritis now at age 25. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is it is going to be the most yeah. arthritic joint in the body. It's going to be the thumb. Joint. Carpal tunnel from texting. There you go. Jeez. Texting and the video games. And that, I mean, that's why that's why if, if you if listeners, if you have kids, I mean, listen, it, it's an easy distraction tool. And I, and, and I know family members and yeah. friends. But it should be regulated them. for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Asad. It should be regulated. And that's the biggest thing. Like, do it. Cool. It's, it's a great time to be alive, like all this technology, but regulate your kids. Yes, yes. Listen. Play outside. Go play catch with your kids. I don't know what happened, <laughs> but I mean, when you were growing up a son, was it just like it for you? When you, you I, were, well, you know, I don't know. Football? I feel like I have ath- like athleticism in my blood. Like If I didn't work out at least, for, whether it was the gym or go out, shoot some hoops for at least an hour, I felt like, you know, the world was ending. So yeah. not everyone's like that, but uh, it was maybe the way I was... I wasn't even because my parents didn't really force like sports on me. My dad was pretty athletic, but uh, other than that, I mean, I don't know. I, I like I wasn't forced to do it. I was allowed to do it. I think there are a lot of other situations where somebody like a, a dad like tries to live vicariously through like their own uh, kid, and they. Uh, they put that stress on their kid to, to go play and stuff. But like, and then growing up, this is going to say, this is a whole podcast about me and my, like my studies Uh in psychology and stuff, but maybe the kid doesn't like going outside and playing because of the trauma that they suffered as kids, like, you know, because their dad won't push them too hard or something. So then they become, you know, uh, sedentary. They would rather just sit on the couch and do nothing. And then they gain weight. And then it's just a, Whole, you know, chain that's reaction why, there. So, as Assad saying, I think he said he said the best. There's a psychological component here. Yeah. But if there isn't, at least if you're looking at it from just the biomechanics oh, yeah. structurally, but it, it is. That's why it, it's it's a it's a it's a dance. I like to say, yeah. you know, when you're a, you're a parent, it's you have a tough enough job as a parent because you know with with the distractions and everything else, we, we have so many advances in the technology. However, you know, but going back to it, I think that if you can encourage your kids. I mean, I was the kid that, you know, my mom had to, like, call me dinner's ready, yeah. and I still wanted five more minutes to pass out. Right. You know, nowadays, kids are so involved in their games, their heads yeah. down. And so, I mean, I've seen I, I mean, what, like, I could have never imagined, like, an eight-year-old kid having an iPad or something like that. It's insane. It's insane. I mean, I, yeah. I had my, my, my niece was, was better with an iPad when she was three than, than <laughs> some 30-year-old. Yeah. It's, you know, but kids nowadays are growing up with that. However, you know, really try to, like Asad said, regulate it. Um, make sure you stay on top of it. But going back to like the topic of structural stress, you really want to make sure you address that. That's the biggest thing. When you have an old structural injury, like again, whether it's a sports injury or normal, you know, the normal wear and tear injury, or 
what I see more is not just a sudden like I sprained my ankle or I you know injured my shoulder injury. I see more in my office of chronicity. Right. I tell patients all the time, like, you know, what Brit, what brought you in the office? And the number one quote in MRI is pain. It's, it's pain. They're yeah. going to say, oh, pain brought me here. Yeah. And the side said it best, pain. But I say, no, it doesn't. And I get a look on the face, a dumbfounded look. And I said, pain didn't bring you my office lifestyle did. Because, you know, pain is the last thing to show up the first thing to go away. I mean, and I'll pose this question to you, Asad, because if you look at the nerves in our body, mm -hmm. we have three different types of nerves. We have sensory nerves, right. sensation. So if you touch a hot plate, you yeah. know it's a hot plate to get your hand off of it. Um, you know, or we have mm -hmm. nerves that are for motor. So if, right. I, if I send a signal down to my brain to raise my arm, I'm going to raise my arm yeah. up or twiddle my fingers or something. And then we have pain fibers. I mean, right. we have pain nerves. So what do you think? How What percentage of the nerves in your body, 25%, 50%? For pain? Or pain, yeah. Hmm. Uh, I think it's a large portion. I'd say close to 50%. That's what most people would yeah. think. You'd think that most of the, the pain of the, of the nerves in your body are pain nerves. Oh, wait. So it's probably less. So, yeah, it's the last. Yeah. So maybe, because I was thinking maybe in the thing, like uh, most of the scent, those pain fibers and stuff are probably in your, like, uh, you know, your toes and your. Fingers and stuff like that. So maybe it's a smaller percentage. It's a now that smaller I think. percentage, yeah. And that's Can I phone a friend? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's phone a friend. It's actually, guys, it's 10%. Wow. 10%. You know, you, you, you think about it. That's why I tell patients, if pain brought you in, you have to realize that there are, there are compromised nerves in your body. 90% of the nerves are sensory and motor. So what you may not be aware of is what effect that inflammation and or irritation on the nervous system is having that's not pain related. Right. So a lot of those nerves that come out of your spine or going down in your arms, they're going to also different areas. Mm -hmm. You know, sensory motor, I talk about biomechanics, but you're also talking about like organ function. Yeah. And that kind of like, you know, so going back to it, structural stress. So, you know, you're like, Dr. Sam, you're talking about structural stress. What do I do if I have one? Well, first and foremost, if you have any kind of ailment, if you have tightness in your upper shoulders, which I think that, I mean, who doesn't? Everyone does. <laughs> everyone does. Who yeah. doesn't? You know, I mean, Trump's president, so <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone has <laughs> pain in their shoulders. I think, I think Sorry to be political. <laughs> I had to. He, he had to throw that political in there. You know what? We agree on that. I'm not even going to shy away from that. But listen, whether you are political or not, I think that if you are. That's a huge emotional stress. That's a huge emotional stress for a lot of people. So it's going to oh, be I mean, life in general you're going to have. But structural stress, if you have something and – you know, you have something, you have that lower, the, the, the problem is we also become used to stress. Right. Um, so lower back, oh, I get lower back pain. Oh, it's, it's just time. kind of something you live with. Because it's not like, you know, the pain obviously can get to a point where it's, you know, unbearable. But most of the time, it's just something that you, it's just an irritation. And, and you don't, if it's not like super pain, if it's just nagging, you're not going to really address it until it gets too bad where it's almost impossible to even. You know, you, it, it makes somebody like your job 10 times harder. It does. It does. And I'm glad you said that because a lot of people that come to my office, you know, they, whether you've ever had an experience with a chiropractor, a doctor of chiropractic or not, you know, your expectation may be different. Some people come to my office and say, yeah, I used to go to a chiropractor. I used to go three times a week for six months. And I'm like, okay, that could be, you know, that was a treatment plan they were put on. I mean, again, I'm not here to talk ill will toward any of my colleagues. However, you know, some people think like that have never had an experience and they accept you in one or two visits to undo, you know, what yeah. has a lifestyle built. Yeah. So years and years of years yeah. and years. So the sooner you get to any kind of, so what I, what I would stress to each of you, I use that word as a pun intended, <laughs> <laughs> is become aware of your own body. I mean, really start to listen. A lot of times I, I use the, the joke that, you know, you may speak Chinese and your body speaking Greek. You know, we're mm -hmm. at just a disconnect with our own bodies. So learn to recognize the signs because it may not just be pain. If you wake up in the morning and every morning you wake up, you're like, my pinky and my ring finger on my left hand are a little bit numb and mm -hmm. tingly. That's nerve irritation. Or every morning when I get up, I, my, my, my ankle feels a little locked up, you know, or my knee doesn't extend. I have to get walking a little bit. That's your body telling you something. 
So based on this, guys, the action step I would say is, you know, definitely start to talk to a professional, somebody who's a biomechanics expert. I don't care what initials they put behind their name. I don't even care. You know, they want to, and credibility is huge here. That's why, like, you know, talking to someone like a, a doctor of chiropractic, a physical therapist, right. an orthopedist who understands biomechanics, you know, right. like, and, and no disrespect, there are a lot of orthopedic surgeons out there, but they may scare you and think, oh, you know, take this medication or this surgery. And they're, they're not wrong. It's just, you know, those are the tools in their tool belt. Yeah. So they're going too far too quickly. There you go. Too far too quickly. And it's conservative. Be conservative first. You know, start with the conservative management first. If you don't respond, of course, you can always go that route. So that's what I would stress to you guys. If you have anything, come become aware of your own become a Sherlock Holmes of your own body. Right. Really recognize and understand. But don't like uh, go on web MD and pretend like you're dying after. Well that's (laughs) the thing, Web MD people are Everyone thinks they're dying after that. What the I have pain in my ankle. Now I have a, a terminal <laughs> illness. So. <laughs> oh, no. I can't tell you. That's the thing. I, I think that, that I have a good friend who's an ER doctor. He says that he gets frustrated when people become their own. Yeah. You know, those, you know they come in and, and they have printed out what I'm doing. I think I have this. I need the blue pill. I was like, no, no, you don't. No, you don't. Like, let me just go ahead and examine you. But, you know, that'd be number one. Um you know, sw- switching a little bit, you know, the number two type of stress that you're going to probably overcome is going to be the chemical stress. Mm-hmm. And chemical stress can be from a, pro- a wide variety of things. I mean, the foods we eat, the foods we don't eat. I mean, yeah. The, um, the, the no, the, yeah. yeah. Um, the, those, those, those good and bad uh, juices that flow through your brain, like, you know, it could be, you know, like the dopamine and epinephrine and norepinephrine like all that stuff like can be released in a good way but like you know if you have it not regulated like some people even like you know with anxiety disorders and stuff like that it's not regulated so they even have a, like a harder time with those uh the, the chemical stresses and stuff so it's just uh you know you have to take each situation and uh really this is why as like a personal trainer i try to train anybody anybody's situations and stuff so it has to be personal i take anybody so like yeah let's say i'm training somebody with anxiety and that like that stress that anxiety causes just from not even like not even stepping into the gym just like social anxieties and all that stuff all those huge stressors like i have to preach that those chemicals that you're gonna build while you are working out are going to help you. You can almost re- rewire your brain if you train. I mean, Socrates himself, he knew, he didn't know the science behind it, but he knew that being physically fit means that you'd be mentally fit. And uh, it's, and they were, or, and vice versa, like mentally fit helps your physical fitness too. So uh, going back to the chemical aspect of it, everything that uh, is released with a good diet and good exercise can really uh, help those stressors. Yeah, and, and, and as I said it best, I mean, it's not only about, like, reducing the, like, the, these three types of stresses aren't, like, three lanes of bowling where they're individual. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're going to be interaction. Yeah, yeah. They're three, the three, you know, angles of a, of a triangle, so to speak, the triad of stress. So right. they each inter- impact each other. So as Assad said it best, I think, you know, it's not just reducing your chemical stress. It's the fact that you're going to now be able to handle the stressors of right. structural stress and or emotional stress much better because you're tackling and reducing right. and allowing your body to, you know, and, and if that, and to piggyback off of that, if there's one stress that's def- the one stressor in one category that's been very, very important as much as structural emotional are, the chemical stress, because as we said before, what's the number one thing your body does when it gets stressed out? Stress you know, it wants more nutrition. Oh, nutrition, yeah. nutrition. So, and so if you're giving the body the right things it needs to combat that, then you're going to be able to combat stress mm-hmm. much better. But, you know, another, like, I love, you know, I'm a big guy with fun facts, you know, I'm a big, hmm. I put my glasses on, I'm a big dork and uh, <laughs> the fun facts, but this is the, the alarming thing, guys. I mean, take, you know, you date back 30, 40, 40 years. You're talking about 1984, you know, 45% of our calories came from carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates get a bad rap. I think a lot yeah, of it's a huge, like, it's a huge uh, macronutrient. It's and, a huge uh, macronutrient. Thank you. Yeah. Like when you say, because sugars fall under carbohydrates. Yes. But fiber is also fall under carbohydrates too. So like 
there's uh when you say carp like oh i can't eat carbs like that's false you yeah. know what i mean so if you guys don't think you should eat fall uh, eat carbohydrates and 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 i have the gentleman here aside, please dm me yeah because <laughs> uh, please sign up for my, <laughs> for my <laughs> first go, just just visit and i'm gonna have him share one time um what was that instagram name asad, asad shall so a-s-s-a-d-s-h-a-l if you guys aren't following it, just go ahead and go on that Instagram name. Look at a couple of pictures, and if this guy's talking about carbohydrates, pretty sure I was good. just eating brown rice right in front of you. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, people that avoid macronutrients, as I was saying yeah. here, I mean, these are vitally important nutrients. Right. So, you know, we go back to in 1984, 45 percent of our calories came from carbohydrates. Interestingly enough, in two, in, 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 if you come if you compare that to 1900. 1900, so you go back 100 plus years, right. 50, 56% of our calories came from carbohydrates. So 100 plus years ago, we were getting more of our calories from carbohydrates, yet we are fatter and sicker as right. a nation, as a world today than we were then. Because right. if you compare those two years, 1900 oh, man, I wanna, to 1984, yeah. our sugar intake has gone up 50%. Oh man, I, uh, to do a sugar podcast would be amazing too. <laughs> it's like, to, okay, keep writing them down. <laughs> we have think, ideas for days. I think, it, I think we'll just keep growing. The, yeah. but the biggest thing, guys, is I mean, you want to, how do you combat it? It's not about sugar just you put in your, in your coffee. It's not about sugar that you find in, 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 in Coke and, and sodas and everything else. It's guess, not about guess, just candy bars. Guess in a Sprite. Yeah. What's the just guess how many grams of in a in a spray that you'd find sit in a just bottle or a can? in a bottle like you're you're sitting at Publix for those of you who don't know it's a grocery store in Florida, <laughs> it's uh, also a store in Florida. yeah it's, it's the Publix. sexiest one in the nation <laughs> but uh, what do you call it you you're you're sitting there and you're thirsty and they have that fridge right there and it's just a cold sprite and you're like oh it's a, it's a you know, it's a drink you could see right through. There can't be that much in it. You know, whatever. You look at the nutri- like the nutrient facts in the back. Hit, hit, hit us, hit us with the facts. Forty-five, 45 grams 45 of sugar. Grams. If you were to put that in a plastic bag and and show people how much forty-five grams of sugar is, uh, you would probably puke. Like it, it's it's unreal. Like it's a bad. Like you know, it's it pretty much fills the uh, yeah, a normal that's zip. A medical up. term, guys. Puke. That's yeah, a- <laughs> vomit. It, <laughs> it, it really is. I mean, Asad said the best. I mean, it is. You, you're you're dumbfounded. I mean, guys, how do you combat this? Is if you want to talk about sugar? We'll talk about that in another podcast. Well. Doesn't sugar inform? I mean, sugar just, causes inflammation. Yeah, yeah. yeah sugar yeah, okay. causes a lot of inflammation. Biggest thing is there's a big, big difference. I have a lot of my patients that come to me, and and, and you know whether you're paleo or or vegan or pescatarian or there's so many different diets out there. The closer you stick to a whole food diet, the better you are. If it, and I always say this, if it comes from a plant, eat it. If it's made in a plant, don't, you know, like, and so like, you really want to try, and I'm not just saying that, you know, to be completely plant-based, I'm saying like more from the earth, Mm -hmm. you know, whether you decide to, you know, whether you decide you want to eat, you know, fish and chicken and, and, and red meat, um, and pork as well, but the biggest thing is the closer you are to the whole food diet, because the more you look at stuff that's processed, a lot of times when they process things, it's not going to taste that good. Yeah. So they have to add sugar. The biggest trap, guys, please, please, if you're going to take one thing away from this, I'm going to like we'll highlight this in the podcast and say like jump right in. Unsweetened. Unsweetened. And please stop eating fat-free junk. Yeah. Fat-free means, you know, and pardon my language, it means chemical shift storm. Yeah. I mean, fat food, because what they have to do, if, if you take the fat out of food, by the way, which is more calories and actually good calories come from fat, mm-hmm. you should not be afraid of fat. It makes the food taste disgusting. What do you think they have to put in to combat that? This yeah, happened like monosodium glutamate and sugars and stuff like there that. MSG. That happened so, in the 1980s. They, yeah. they were this fat free, fat free cookies. It's a fat idea. Yeah. I mean, they put, pro- I mean, I saw a protein Snickers bar. Are you kidding me? Like they put, pro- yeah, I mean, they put protein in front of everything to make it sound like it's healthier. It's That's ridiculous. Why you gotta watch out. I, I guess I'd say the best guys. Watch out for the trap words. I yeah. think a lot of times. Because unsweetened is like, uh, for example, this like applesauce that we, I had, like uh, Lauren had bought it and it says unsweet and I put like honey in it and then she's like, you know that apples have sugar in it already and i'm like and i and i realized what i had done i was like oh man so 
when they say unsweet, unsweet, that means that they didn't, there's sugar in it, but they didn't add any extra sugar, but there's still a, a lot of sugar in it. Well, that's the, I so, think yeah. I'm glad Assad said that, because I think this is, this is, this is where people become really reluctant to like, well, fruit has a lot of sugar, I want to eat fruit, because fruit's going to, but you have to understand, guys, there's also something called the glycemic index. Oh, yeah. So, you know, when, when you hear that, you know, first for our podcast um, listeners who haven't heard about that. Well, by the way, watermelon has the highest glycemic index. There you go. So like, you know. Fitness pro right there. <laughs> so, what it means is glycemic index foods, like if you, you can look it up and you just Google glycemic index, that's like G-L-Y, uh, C-M, uh, C-E-M-I-C, right. glycemic index. And glycemic index, what it does is it's a direct correlation with how that food uh, interacts with your body to elevate your blood sugar, which then has your body release insulin. Right. So this is this is why it's becoming such a hot topic word for people that are either pre-diabetic or going into diabetes mm-hmm. or have a family history of diabetes and they're trying to avoid it. Because the diabetes epidemic, that's another, I mean, we're just creating podcasts on the podcast. Diabetes epidemic is <laughs> another <laughs> topic we talk about because when you have kids under the age of 10 developing type 2 diabetes in a country, you got a big problem. Oh, yeah. So, but that's the biggest thing, guys. You want to understand the glycemic index. And so, you know, foods that are low on the glycemic right. index, they don't they don't cause a spike in your blood sugar right. levels. So that's the thing is that. like, uh, yeah, for example, I mean, I'd say even for, like anecdotally, if I'm training on, uh, and I incorporate like bananas in my shakes and stuff, I still, even one or two bananas will make me re- like, I, like, let's say I did two weeks of training, same exact workout for two weeks, eating an apple on the banana a day versus not doing that. I've seen personally that when I have no sugars in uh, sugar, like when I say cut sugars out of your diet, I mean, I get as close to zero as possible whether it's from fruits or anything from sodas, whatever, you will melt fat off of your body. It's because of the, like when you have those, um, the insulin spike causes you to stop burning fat basically. So um, that's why people even in bodybuilding mess with insulin uh, injections and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's unreal the lengths that people get to, but like the bottom line is sugar will cause you any sugars that are not used in in like because sugars what are like you know you get the sugar high um it's because it's fast acting energy so if you don't whatever you don't use immediately is going to turn to fat exactly uh, so. i think you said it best though i think you said it and not only low glycemic index, i mean if you have if you have a release of your blood sugar levels from eating sugars. Is this a sugar podcast now? Sugar podcast. Sugar <laughs> to it. But what happens is your body's going to release insulin, which means it's going to store fat. So, right. it's gonna, so as Asad said, it's not only going to keep you from burning fat off your body, mm-hmm. New Year resolution people, <laughs> it's going to help you store more fat. Right. So I don't care if you're working out for an hour. Yeah, you can t- totally ruin it when you're you gonna get ruin back. It. I mean, you need to stay. So, so smoothies, like people go to like the tropical smoothie and stuff like that, and they, they have that right after their workout. And they have no idea that, that the crazy amounts of sugar that's in that protein smoothie that they just ate mm-hmm. or drank, I mean. So it's uh it's these fads are something that we have to definitely, you know, again, touch on. Again, said it best, a fad. So the biggest thing you want to do in these situations, you want to stick to a whole food diet. I mean, really look at, start to become aware of these things. So going back to, a, you know, a chemical stress in the body, what you put inside your body. And again, reading labels, reading labels. I like to use a little tactic. I actually do a, um, uh, something. Uh, it's it's uh, a little thing I put together um, with my patients. It's called Shopping with the Doc. If anybody's interested, um, we'll put a link on, in, on this podcast. Um, just you can go ahead and message me. Uh, we'll let you know when the next one's going to be. What I do is actually I take um, no more than 10. We like to keep it small. We take up to 10 patients and or interested participants. Mm-hmm. So you can sign up for it. And we'll actually, for one hour, I will walk around with these, with my patients and or interested participants. Yeah, I'll go. And there you go, into the grocery store. And we'll do not only just not Whole Foods and, and Publix and Kroger's and, you know, for all the guys around the, you know, the U.S. and different grocery stores. You don't have to go to a Whole Foods or a Fresh Market all the time. But you have to know how to shop. Right. And the number one thing I, I mean, tell, I tell yeah. everybody is stick to the outside store. I mean, try to make minimal 
you know, you know, turn your cart down the aisles. But really, one, you want one easy tactic to take home. Stick to the outside of the grocery store. Your produce is your meat. I mean, personally, I would limit your dairy cut and your dairy intake because, you know, we'll yeah, talk about that later. But, dairy, yeah, yeah the, the inflammation that causes in the body. But you really want to stick as natural as possible. So your fruits and vegetable produce, everything is on the outside of the store. When you start going down the center of the aisles, that's when you're going to get your, pardon my language again, chemical shifts. Right, right. You know, your processed foods, they have to bombard with all these chemicals. Mm-hmm. So you think what you put in your body, you're going to get the, you know, it's output. The, the biggest facade out there, and I think you can test this facade, is the people, facade. the facade, facade, the facade, facade. facade with a side. Oh, yeah, that's a bunch of us to you guys. <laughs> is Assad is a is 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 a is a natural fitness guru. I mean, he's put years and years and years right. into, into into you know really bringing his body up to par. I didn't eat that anabolic chicken. No, sure. they didn't the anabolic That's chicken, true. and and he didn't do the anabolic way. But yeah. you know, but the biggest thing I think you can attest to Todd, is is that you see a lot of people out there, whether they're on the social media platforms, that are self-proclaimed fitness gurus, right. yet they're bombarding their body with. And crap. Stuff, yeah. With crap. Or they're, or they'll, they maybe they're not ingesting that, but they're selling it. You know what I mean? They're, they're advertising for it because it cuts their, it, it pays their bills, or like they're selling their souls for, you know, chump change. And it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it's again, a whole nother podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, is, uh, you know, I, I try to, I don't, I've never, ever, the things I said 10 years ago, are the same things that I'm saying today with a little bit of an enhancement. But other than that, I've stayed pretty true to my own uh, advice. Well, I think I think you've done also something where you've grown these 10 years. You, yeah. you learn. I mean, that, that's the biggest thing. And, and that can kind of go back to it. I mean, you want to surround yourself with people that are, you know, they're going to help you grow, but they're also because they're striving. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, just, just hanging out with Assad, um, you know, every time I have, I've, I've had the, the pleasure of doing so, you can tell – you know, you you're around, and this is why I say it's really important. You know, show me your show me your circle. I'll show you your future. Yeah. Because the people you hang out with on a on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, and you spend most of your time with, I mean, these are the people that you're going to be. Whether you're going to be lethargic in your approach for betterment, self improvement, or you're going to be striving to be better, right? right. It's physical, mental, psychological, emotional. You're if you're be, the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. You're in the wrong room. You're in yeah. the wrong room. And I think that you know that that definitely. You know, I love being around someone like, like Assad and his, his lovely girlfriend, Lauren. And, you know, these are the type of people that make me want to be better. Right. And so, yeah, we, you know, you've, you've gone through this 10-year, you know, 15-year journey right. where you've learned more about your body and you've learned how to handle it. Right. But I think a lot of people out there, they're, I mean, I don't there's want to. So, see, the thing is that there's one thing that's almost as bad as no information is too much, an inundation of information especially with social media again for our our okay so i love that zero information is the worst right Mm -hmm. like to be completely in the well i don't even know it's arguable but when you're inundated with so much information out there that you could i mean you could google something and the first page that pops up is a page that's very popular right but it's not reviewed by any science or anything it's just anecdotal claims so when you have so much information out there, you freeze. You don't, you know, you, you, you don't know where to go. So you just decide to choose one thing and follow it. And it could be the worst decision you've ever made. So maybe arguably, I'd rather not even have read that is better than, you know, like dealing with, there's no, fil- like, imagine trying to filter everything that's on the internet and try to find the right thing. I so, feel like, I feel like after this podcast, I guess not, it's going to have to copyright a lot of these things. Yeah. Because, I, I like I was my jaw just dropped. That was the, that was a perfect, yeah. perfect. I mean, he put a bow on it for you guys. I mean, inundation, inundation of information. Guys, you have to understand that food companies don't have to prove that their products are dangerous and or safe. Right. You realize a lot of the food industry just has to confuse the crap out of you, just so you're confused. You were so overwhelmed. Right. Should I eat this? Should I not eat this? I heard carbs are bad for you. So that's so much that's stress right there. You know? I mean, food is the number one of the most important things we have in our lives. And yeah. imagine being stressed out about not knowing what to eat. Exactly. So what happens is exactly what Assad said. You don't know what to eat. 
So what happens? Well, one, 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 I've heard you don't eat carbs. Someone said, don't eat fats. Someone said, eggs are good for you. No, eggs are bad for you. Right. No, they cause, they cause yeah. cholesterol. They cause heart attacks. So what do they do is they confuse the hell out of all of the consumers out there to the point where they want you, it's called the, 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 you know, the, I give up moment where you throw your arms up and you say, and you I go give get up. that big Mac go, at McDonald's. Yeah, I'm just going to eat whatever. I mean, I don't care. Yeah. I'll just eat this. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I speak, I think both of us can, and I can both speak from experience. We have family members that are absolutely like, I mean, I have family members that are just like, well, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, they rely on their, uh, what is it? Like genetics, like the younger, my cousins and stuff like they'll, they say, oh, well, I don't gain weight. But the thing is, I call it, I don't know what I, I was trying to remember what I said, but it's like having a Ferrari shell and a Prius engine or something like, well, not a Prius, but like a, a smaller engine. Like you don't, you, you might look great on the outside, but on the inside, you have no idea what's going on. No disrespect to Ford out there. Prius. But I think he's best. 60 miles a gallon. <laughs> it's a shell. I mean, it's yeah. like having a jumper. A jumper yeah. You don't know the, the, like the vascular problems that you might be, or the arteries and stuff that you're the, all the plaque you're building and, and all that. So the biggest thing, guys, is like going back to the chemical stresses that occur in the body. So you're talking about nutrition that you put inside your body. So how do you combat this? Again, you know, we could sit here and talk for hours, but listen, Probably, I'm, I'm yeah. an action. I don't even know where we're at. Right? You go ahead. We're I'm 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 a you know I'm an action I'm a big action kind of guy. I know what size as well. So what do you do? All this information, you know, like we're, we're, you know, you, you see talking heads on all the news stations and talking about this and that and the other thing. But you know what? Time to take action. So what do you do? Two two action steps we already talked about. Number one, get good at reading your labels. And when I say reading labels, look at the calories. You know, look at the calories. It's a numbers so, game. You know? It's a numbers sure. game. So if you look at, let's just use like barbecue sauce, and you're picking up, oh, I'm going to throw a barbecue, throw a barbecue sauce. And I pick up a bottle of barbecue sauce, and I look at that one tablespoon of barbecue sauce has 100 calories. And of that 100 calories, it says that there are, in one tablespoon of barbecue sauce, there is 10 grams of sugar. Right. That means, and just so you guys know, just some numbers for you, every calorie, every, so there's four calories for every gram of carbohydrate. Right. Four, okay, four, nine. Four, four calories, yep, four, four, nine. Four calories of energy. So it's four, four, nine is a side set. Of Fat four. is nine, right? And, and exactly. proteins are four. Exactly. And the thing is, though, like, let me stop you. Yeah, go ahead. You have to read not only the calorie count, but it says how many calories from fat on the, on the bottom. But that, I mean, they should actually say how many calories are from carbs, but that's more important. Like the fats are, as you said from before, some most of the fats are pretty good for you. Um, you know, uh, you know, you get into the monosaturated and saturated, unsaturated, all that stuff. So that's whole like a whole biology lesson that you have to learn. That's but whole, yeah. Pro- you know, you could hear something has crazy, like a burger has like 1,600 calories, but some of that or most of it is from the proteins. So, mm-hmm. like, that's a huge dramatic, like, I'm not going to say go eat burgers, but, mm-hmm. you know, um, you have to do the math. Like, you have to do the math. So, yeah. something, a chicken could have a huge amount of calories, and it's just because the calories are coming from the protein. Mm-hmm. Um and the thing is, if you do even more research, you'll realize that protein burns more calories than it is that you in, that you ingest. Yeah. So that's how you burn the fat. Yeah. So protein, I think, is not the best. If you if you guys know that there was a, the American Dietitian Association talked about that fifty seven guys sixty percent almost sixty percent of the protein you digest is actually used converted to energy. So you're going to actually use it as energy. A lot of these people that are eating a lot of protein. They may not be building clean muscle tissue. You have to understand you're eating the right type of protein, and you're actually eating the other macronutrients. If you become yeah. a proteinaholic, as I call it, you're you're not going to be doing your body a service because you have to understand it's also like stress on your liver, mm-hmm. stress on your kidneys, and it's all these other things. Yeah, it so all has to be a balance. It's got to be a balance. So going back to the analogy of the barbecue sauce, you're talking about a hundred. Let's just use the analogy of hundred calories per tablespoon, and four. There's ten grams of sugar. Four times six, four calories. Yeah. Four times ten is forty. You right. know, forty calories. So you're talking about every tablespoon of barbecue sauce, hundred calories. Forty of those calories are coming from sugar. You're yeah. talking about forty percent of a food product is coming sugar. calories coming from sugar. So that's where you want to not fall into the trap. I always like to say, if it's above twenty five percent, if twenty five percent of the calories are coming from, especially specific sugar. Now, fruits, 
you know, I'm not going to include it that because fruits have something called sugar alcohols. That's another bi- yeah. biology lesson. Yeah. They're not going to spike your insulin levels. But I'm talking about sugar from processed foods. If you want to become a quick label reader, do some math. If you have to, listen, who, who, you know, I don't care how dorky you may look. Bring a calculator <laughs> yeah. with you. And, I mean, this is your life we're talking about, guys. Yeah. I mean, do you want to be – you want to be labeled a dork and you be labeled dead because it's not, it's, this isn't, this isn't, you know, this is a life or death game. You know, this is like, you know, and, you, and there's no second chances guys. No, you know, this is not a video game. Exactly. You don't get to hit the reset button. Yeah. So really this is, you, you got one life, you got to live it. So learn to become a good right. label. Maker. And the way that I can like tie this all up is that gaining weight, right? Mm-hmm. What does that cause? You start to hate what, how you look, you stress yourself out and, what is that? So the, we're talking structural, right? Yeah. You gain weight. You're adding stress onto your joints because of the weight, right? Mm-hmm. The chemicals released from getting stressed about your weight gain, such as cortisol, you know, that's the main uh, like hormone, yes. hormone that's yeah. released because of stress. What does cortisol do? It causes you to gain weight. It blocks the, you know, you don't burn as much when you're on the cortisol, right? So you're gaining that weight, and it leads to the chemical or the uh, the emotional stress too. So, I mean, like, it it's a dance, as you said. Like everything is related somehow, and the gaining, and it's not just you know, put the cookie down. How about yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just put it. You know, guys, when you have that epiphany moment, you know you're standing, you're, you're sitting across from, from a brilliant person. I think that he just basically Assad said it best, and this is why I I, I just I laugh when people are like. Well, this doctor said this or this doctor. Listen, there are people that are extreme. I mean, he said it brilliantly, guys. They are interchangeable and affect one another stresses. Yeah, Stress, it's just a, it's a snowball. It's yeah. a snowball. So effect. let's 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 we don't like. I feel like we talked about emotional stress is like the biggest one we could even talk about. Yeah, but, we could go down. There. Um, that could be a whole podcast in itself. Oh, yeah. Uh, but for the first one, let's just tie this up in a in a bow and let's let's just yeah. go over it one more time. So you said it's what is it again? Structural stress is number one. we talked about yeah. in no particular order. Right. Structural stress number one. So that can be anything related to an old injury mm-hmm. and or chronic biomechanical stresses like rolling your shoulders forward, right. sitting hunched over. You know, walking and your hips are not walking correctly, so you're right. basically like you know, turn a little bit, causing undue stress on your body. Any structural stress, biomechanical stress on the body. Right. Number two, yeah, chemical stress. Mm-hmm. Chemical stress is typically, we think about chemical stresses from a nutrition standpoint, mm-hmm. what you put in your body, not only what you put in your body, but what your actual body is using, right. digesting, using up. Because I could tell you to eat avocados because they're healthy fats, but if you can't digest them, guess what? That's a stress on your body. Yeah. So that's another one. And I think that Segwaying another, I guess I, I'd say a subset A, nutrition, subset B of chemical stress would be hormone balance. Mm-hmm. How many people out there, I mean, aside, you must know people, you know, as they start to get a little bit older, even younger people now, lose testosterone. they lose mm-hmm. testosterone, yeah. hormone imbalances. Yeah. How many people are getting hormone replacement therapy in right. their society? I mean, it, it's, it's astronomical. And not to mention, you said it a little earlier. The meats that we're eating nowadays could be imba- like causing the imbalance too. They're, 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 they're pumped through hormones, meats with yeah. hormones. Right. I mean, a lot of these meats, you know, you want to get. They say, "Oh, I'm trying to get you know hormone-free meat." I mean, why do you see you see that on so many labels? Because the hormone imbalances. We have younger and younger kids. If you don't believe me, parents, you know, do the research. The AMA has come out and said that this is an epidemic that we have younger and younger kids in this country going into puberty. I mean, what could, what what was typically for girls and boys, typically you're talking about the teens, right. so anywhere from 11 to 14 years old is entering puberty. You're having kids as young as seven or eight years old, even younger in some Jeez. situations, entering puberty. It's it's And it's not for any reason other than the fact that the hormone-laced foods that we're taking in are causing an imbalance in our body, which is a chemical stress. So I'm, really move some, I'm just going to grow like my own self-sustaining farm <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> just yeah. catch me in like <laughs> Ireland. Or Atlanta, <laughs> yeah. Here, so. yeah. <laughs> but that's the biggest thing you want to do, guys. I mean, you really want to become so, so going back to the action steps. So action steps for chemical stress. You want to really become a label reader. Right. You want to understand the labels. And then the side set of best. If you don't remember, like we'll, we'll put a, we'll put a little reminder for you guys. 994, 994. 
calories. No, they tell 449. 449. Or, yeah, 449. It sounds good. 994. 444. Just remember that the most calories you get are from fats. Now, people are like, oh my gosh, i got to keep my calories down. Not necessarily, because you got to think energy. Right. Energy on a daily basis. So if you're stressed, what did we say before? Again, we said it. Stress, number one thing it does, it wants more nutrition. Well, what's the most nutrient-dense compound? It's fats. Right. So your body's going to demand the fats. If you don't give it fats and or, and or, and I'm going to really underline this, you can't digest fats or you can't digest protein. For my ladies and even more and more gentlemen I've come across that are like, I'm a natural sweet tooth. No. <laughs> I, sweet. I can't just eat just one cookie. I can't just have yes, a yes. bite of a cupcake. Because, but that's not you. That's not on them. It could be subconsciously your body's going, hey, you're not giving me fats. You're not giving me protein. I want the quickest energy form, sure. aka sugar. Yeah. And so your body can, and as soon as it gets sugar, it goes, oh, give me, give me, give me, give me. Yeah, yeah. But if you could actually digest the other, the other macronutrients, you wouldn't be craving the sugar as much. Right. Your sweet tooth may still be there. I'm not saying it's going to go away, but you're not going to be needing, you know, a whole half a cake. You know, you ever seen the the the, the, the um, TV shows or cartoons where they cut one slice of cake and they take the whole rest of the cake? Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Have less of that information. That's just one piece, right? It's just one piece. <laughs> but so again, going back to an action steps, you really want to become like a label reader. You definitely want to, you know, stick to the outside of the grocery store mm-hmm. and doing natural. You want to keep the whole foods. You know, really stuff that your body's easily more easily digestible. God, I want Whole Foods now. <laughs> yeah. the, the 899 bar is gonna make me broke. <laughs> <laughs> you want to stick to eating whole whole foods. You know, you want to keep your your produces. You know, your your you know your fruits and vegetables. You want the lean meats if you if you do take that route. But the biggest thing I would also say is you want to make sure to become aware. How you feel? I tell a lot of my patients okay. that come into my nutritional consultation. You are what you eat. It's kind of like a cliche, but it, it's you are true. What you eat. Take a journal. I mean, realistically, guys, do this for three days. It will change your life for three days. I, I challenge each of my listeners out there: keep a journal and write down breakfast and write down what exactly you eat. Now, if you want to get detailed: four ounces of oatmeal, or you know, you know, five ounces of cereal. What cereal you eat? Eight ounces of milk. But if you just want to say milk, this cereal, da 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 da, da. and then later after you eat, just kind of talk, like write down notes. I feel really tired. I feel kind of bloated. I had to go to the bathroom pretty frequently right after I ate. These are notes that you're basically identifying what your body is doing when you're eating. I think Assad Assad can speak to this because you know being a fitness guru and understanding his own body is way to build build his physique. You understand the interaction your body has with the food you eat. Oh yeah. So I, I, it's been a it's been a trial and error thing. I was literally like every you know uh, as we call it shoot prep or whatever. Like uh, you kind of just play mad scientist and you see what what you because everyone reacts to different macronutrients differently, whether or even like sodium and stuff like that. So it's a it's a huge because tr- nobody's this. We're all like fingerprints. You know, we're not really the same. Uh, in, in terms of digestion and, and how our body reacts to certain things. So, you know, but there are certain fundamentals that everyone pretty much follows. And that being, stay away from sugar as much as you can. You know what I mean? So. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's the biggest thing. And you really want to, and for all the people out there, and listen, this is just this is just one doctor's take on yeah. it. Again, everyone's different. However, in my, in my experience and the research I've done and I've seen out there, I personally have not, I have gone dairy-free for going on seven years now. I've been I love there. almond milk. So that's... There you go. You gotta go. Well, I do the almond milk. I do yeah. almond milk and coconut milk. I just don't do cow's milk. I mean, you realize we're the only species out there that drinks the milk of another, another species. Right. And, you know, understandably so, guys. I mean, they, they, the more research comes out there, dairy just has so many detrimental effects. So people think dairy is great for calcium or great for protein. There are other ways to get calcium right. and protein in your diet. With our new technology and stuff, we don't need a we resort need to, to, you know, milking a cow. Exactly, exactly. You know, we are literally, you know, we're we're trying to milk the last ounce of, you know, from the cow. So going to it, but, you know, you have your structural stress. You got your chemical stresses. You're trying to reduce these two. And then, again, as Asad said it before, you know, emotional stress. And we could talk about that for hours upon end. 
But you understand that if you reduce your body's, these two first two types of stress of structural and chemical, you allow your body to handle emotional stresses better. Right. Now, how can you help yourself out in that in the third realm, emotional stress? Of course, by taking time for yourself. In this fast-paced society, I don't care what job yeah. you entail, family obligations you have, I cannot tell you how important it is to take a little time for yourself. Yeah, I mean, so it's just I just read something today, I think. It was, uh, I forget the actual term that they used, but the longer you're online or on your new, like, techn technological-based, like, uh, you know, phones and stuff, um, the, the more of a chance that you will be subconsciously always wanting to know, like, what's going on. And that affects your sleep. What does sleep do? A lack of sleep dep deprivation is one of the worst forms of, uh, you know, things that we, we could do to our bodies. So it's just unreal the, the how everything kind of just goes hand in hand. And it's... Um, yeah, like we could go on and on about yeah. this, but no, I, no I, like I'm the. Glad, I'm glad you said about I'm, the electronics. Yeah, because I think people just don't know. You know, we're 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 in an instant gratification yeah. society. I mean, we need instantaneous. I mean, we have literally, and and you know, it is. You know, we have the whole world at the touch of our fingertips. Right. You know, we are fortunate enough to be able to. Most people have smartphones nowadays. Yeah. We have the accessibility to any information that we want at all times. At all times. Yeah. And that's what, what you feel like. It's like a FOMO type thing. You, If you're not on your phone, you feel like you're missing out on something that might be happening. And you're always constantly. So, and you're, you, uh, I love being able to tie things together, but like sleep deprivation and uh, text neck. That's that's neck. <laughs> yeah. You have your phone on while in bed. Uh, you know, you're killing your eyes. You're killing your neck. You're killing your sleep. You're gaining stress. You're gaining weight. You're, it's just yeah, yeah, it's that, the end of the world. Because sleep deprivation, guys, that's another – that's a huge proponent. What's the number one detrimental effect of sleep deprivation other than the fact you're kind of grumpy in the morning yeah. is waking. Because yeah. your body, it, it, it's so stressed out because you need sleep. Sleep is a time for your body to recover. If you're not getting the proper yeah. sleep, and it's not just the hours, it's actually the quality of the sleep – then what you're doing is actually, as a side side effect, you are now creating a stressful environment right. in your body. It's going to release more of that hormone we talked about, cortisol. What does cortisol do? Cortisol causes your body to go into fat storage mode. Right. So you're not going to so, not only be able to lose weight, you're actually going to so gain. So it's a survival tactic that's kind of going against us right now. Exactly. So, against us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're no longer running from a saber to tiger for our <laughs> yeah. lives. We're now we're sitting with a sausage with muffin yeah. <laughs> trying to figure out what emails to check. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't think it's a life or death that, situation. That sounds though. way too personal. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do that. That was me. Yeah. But that's the biggest thing. I think that, you know, and I think you said it best. Another, so, so how do you combat emotional stress? I mean, there's so many things. Yeah. Listen, you know, people say, I do yoga. I do Pilates. Just do take, yoga. as you were saying, like, I didn't want to like change it off too no, much, but you basically said, um, take time for yourself. Yes. So there's that right there encompasses everything that you could do to, to combat emotional stress, whether it's reading a book, and, you know, outside or, you know, uh, as I will constantly allude to working out, um, mm -hmm. that, you know, physical fitness, uh, going on a run, just taking time for yourself. Go do a Sudoku or something. I don't know. Something that's like not technological based, just completely turn off your brain um, and We're allow yourself to live in yeah, you know, go to the beach, go, to the go beach. I mean, take a swim or something. Yeah, I mean, I I can't tell you guys how many times I've, I mean, I've had the fortune of, you know, if you live in a tropical environment, we're, you know, going to the beach and sitting at the beach. Yeah. I mean, literally just, you know, sit on the just sand. Smell the fresh air. Smell, smell that salt water air and just listen to the waves crash. Yeah. And literally just yourself. detach yourself. Yeah. Take a book if you'd like to. If not, just kind of chill and sure. hang out and yeah. just relax. Think what? about take that journal that you know Dr. Sam was talking about and write out some goals you want to do or whatever and or what like your diet plan or anything that you think that would enhance your life. Like go and just detach and focus on yourself and do that for thirty minutes to an hour a day and you'll see your life turn around. It's a great sure. topic about talking about the journal because I think I mean I have a five person journal I know side has a journal himself. If you talk about the top people in their respective fields, anywhere from CEOs to 
great actors or athletes and or, you know, people that have a huge influence in today's society in business and medicine and, and you know, legal up, uh, aspects. You're talking about these, these top notch individuals, professionals, and every single one of them can attest to it that they have some sort of journaling that they do. And that they have what's called, you know, you want to have affirmation because they use visualization. Visualization, guys, I mean, it's as I used to be, I didn't believe in it. I was like, yeah, okay, that's that mumbo jumbo, you know, stuff. But I'll tell you what, the better you can get at visualization, the more you're going to invite the the prosperity to slide. Yeah, the visual sense is the most coveted one. I mean, I, and again, I read somewhere that. Um, that's not very credible to say that, but I I guarantee you that uh, I think they did a poll on if you had to choose one sense to keep and lose everything else, almost like I think it was like over sixty percent of people said they wanted their eyes, mm-hmm. and uh, that's because visuals the the eye sense is the most potent one. Exactly, um, but it's not just like seeing it, it, it's it's also seeing what you can't see. Yeah. Visualization, and we're talking about it, so it and, and I'm sorry, glad Assad said that because it's also like this psychological eye. Right. Because you're because you, you just because you don't have it, just because you don't have it doesn't mean you don't you know you're, you're almost Your like you're fighting eye. it. You're telling the universe, I'm ready for this prosperity. Right. So again, a challenge, another action step for you guys to combat emotional stress. I don't care if you're going through hell in a handbasket with personal and professional stresses. You know, I would invite you every single morning when you wake up. Grab your journal and write in it three things you're grateful for. And I don't give, again, I'm not going to hold back because I'm black, white, kind of, I don't give a damn. There's no right or wrong answer. You could be grateful for the, the food in your fridge. You could be grateful for having a nice car. This is no superficiality. You could be grateful that you have air in your lungs. You could be grateful that you have a nice Armani suit. You could be great. I don't give a damn what the hell it is. But really give some gratefulness because what you're grateful for, the universe hears you and will give you more of that. Be grateful, number one. Buy three things you're grateful for. I'm grateful for my my, my loving friends who believe in me and everything I do. I'm grateful for the clothes in my closet. I don't care what it may be. But three things you're grateful. And number number two, write down three affirmations. Three affirmations you're going to do that day. I will do this. I will, you know, contact 10 New prospective clients. Right. I will, you know, these three challenges. And just so give it. yourself goals because if you're trying to work aimlessly, you're not going to get anywhere. This is like it goes back to you know physical fitness and stuff. Like, set a goal, set a date, set the, whether it's spring break or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. have something palpable exactly. that you can work towards. Yeah, whether you set a goal, you said I will lose twenty pounds by the end of March two thousand nineteen. Yeah. You're giving yourself the next, you know, three yeah. and a half months, or you can say, I'm going to start January 1st, you know, New Year's yeah. and that energy. So like when you have raw energy, it can convert to stress. So like if you have some kind of guidance or some kind of goal, you can direct all that raw energy you have pent up towards something constructive rather than something destructive, like, like stress. So. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful. That's absolutely right. Raw energy can, can be destructive and constructive. It's, it's how you use it. Yeah. It's how you use it, guys. I mean, you can use – it's how you use things. Because people, what happens when they have – you. it's very easy to feel happy mm-hmm. and to be grateful when everything's all right. Oh, yeah. But when it's going on, you really see how, what, who somebody is when everything is going against how, them. I mean, how long aside of your story, how long did it take you to get to where you're at now oh. that you're signing? Like, you're, you're, you just signed a contract recently, correct? Catharsis uh, yeah, happened a few weeks ago, but – uh, way, yeah, thank awesome you, day. thank you. Um, but it was the, the inception of the idea of me wanting to do, like the goal that I wanted to do was like, you know, moving to Miami and, and sign. I mean, I didn't get to move to Miami until last year. Um, and how long ago did you have this room? Well, I started at, in Orlando UCF at 18, 17 inch, 18. I started modeling around that time. For those of you guys um, who don't know, if you haven't if you haven't already started following us, I, he is a uh, fitness model. Yeah, well, I don't like to limit myself, but I started as a fitness model and I got model, into like more like now he's, now he's a, a guru model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so it was as if you do the math, like seven years of 
of trial and error and, and gritting my teeth and and sitting on the bathroom floor wondering you know what I'm gonna is is uh, you know self doubt ran, ran rampant. Um, but it was at those times that I really truly you know figured out who I was and 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 that I think you know if you just push through it. I mean we even just talked about this with you know the doc and you know he uh, whether whoever is going like wh- whatever you're going through just keep going through hell because I know that it is going to help you in the long run. And, and, and I'm glad Assad said that because, you know, you know, you, you, you look at what he's become now. And, 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 all the and it's just the beginning for me, at least, in yeah, my, and, in my and, idea. And that's, see, see, for a man who, with, with the humility and, and gratefulness that he has, understanding that his journey took seven years. Seven years, this man had a vision to make it a reality. Right. And he went through all the, and he had all instances pushing against yeah. it, like he said, being, being, you know, you know, on the bathroom floor or sitting in your apartment, sitting on the floor, doubting yourself, doubt will always be there, yeah. you know, and, and, and heaven, heaven help you. If you have like, you know, don't let me start on friends and family that will try to turn you from your <laughs> dreams. So, you know, be your, be your own biggest believer. And this was seven years just to get the opportunity to maybe make it, you to know what I mean? So like, it's, it's, it, it definitely is a stressful, you know, field. The entertainment business is is not for the faint of heart, but uh, you know, it's it's because of all the sports and everything that we, you know, trying again trying to tie everything together. Uh, you know, the way that I, the things that I learned from being able to like go through those minimal stresses in the beginning and and figured out those coping mechanisms allowed me to approach and handle and not avoid the bigger stresses you know along the way and and i'm like forever grateful for anybody who's like helped me in that so yeah it's uh i I think that you're a testament you 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 are an embodiment of of, of courage you're an embodiment of determination you're an embodiment of inspiration because anyone who's going through i mean you went through and, and again you're gonna have doubt in everything you do, guys, and so that's why it's so important. So we go back to again action step. So you know, being, being yeah. to give, give we, we became we went from chiropractic to Tony Robbins or something. Yeah, <laughs> went from like yeah chiropractic care to Tony Robbins. But it's so that's yeah. why it's so this yeah. topic of stress is so multifaceted. Yeah, I mean, stre- it's absolutely multifaceted. Stress, like, stress is actually probably the number one killer in the world. Too. It is, it yeah. is because I mean, it causes the heart diseases and the and the stuff. I mean, it's 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 a to talk about epidemics. It's a pandemic. Yes, it's, it's a, a it's a worldwide yeah. thing. I mean, every yeah. human goes through it, and we're going the internet age and all this stuff. But we are living in probably the most uh, the nights the the normal stress levels of a student these days are the same as a psychiatric patient back in the 1950s, and that fact has always haunted me and let that sink uh, in go ahead and say that one more time because i want you guys to listen and just let that sink in for a second the stress levels of a normal student in school these days are the same level as patients back in the 1950s in psychiatric care so patients in psychiatric care in the 1950s that were being treated for any kind of neurological or psychological disorders that were having a multitude of symptomatology and a multitude of of different ailments that right. were come. Typical students, I mean, you have to let that sink in, guys. I mean, that's that, crazy. That's, that's the stress. I mean, that's yeah. unbelievable. I we're, mean, and 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 and, and, the, and the expectations yeah. are only the competitions are higher, the and, the, and, and a lot of people. And, and listen, we, we we use platforms like social media to help us out, but you know, a lot of people suffer from social media depression because we're seeing another person's highlight reels. You know, yeah. they're not showing us the behind the scenes. So again, I use this quote all the time: "Don't compare your behind the scenes to someone else's highlight reel." So really, start right. to take social media for what it's worth, but do not. And listen, I'll raise my hand right now and be like, "I, I fall victim to this." But really, try to check yourself and really see. So going back to emotional stress, action steps you want to do, you really want, as we talked about, find things that make you happy yeah. and bring you at peace with yourself. That's well, yeah. First, you, I think you need to figure out instead of avoiding the stress pinpoint it, bring it to the surface, let it come to a head and, and like, like go deep. Don't just say from the beginning of the podcast, what do we say? 
oh, it's just stress. It's a, uh, it's a, I'm so stressed out. It's not that, it's not that simple. We have to really find the underlying cause of those stresses. So before you can, you know, go and take those action steps, you need to figure out what is causing that stress. And then you could attack it appropriately. Exactly. You have to know your enemy. We said this yeah. pretty in the podcast. To the podcast, you have to know your enemy before you know which weapon to use. Right. So you have to know if the root cause is a structural, chemical, or emotional right. component. And then, of course, in each of, the, of those cascades, you can go even further deep down. I mean, mm-hmm. what is it specifically that's causing it? So, right. when in regards to emotional stress, you really want to try to do something that brings you happiness. And, and, and I and I implore you to do this on a daily basis. And then the other thing I wanted to talk about is, you know, giving, you know, gratitude, you know, three things you're grateful for every day and three affirmations you're going to accomplish. And give yourself goals, as Assad said it best. Give yourself goals. Setting goals can help you kind of, you know, you're working towards something. And number three, and this is the easiest one to implement, I think you touched base upon this, Assad, in a fast-paced, technologically advanced society as we have. Slow down. Slow down, yes. And everyone has a smartphone nowadays. Too many people are using them. What's oh, my alarm clock? It's my this, it's yeah. my that. Right? Do yourself a favor. Everybody, if you have a chance, unless you're driving, please don't do this while you're driving. <laughs> but it pulled over. Go into your settings on your smartphone and pick an arbitrary time. For me, that's 9 p.m. After 9 p.m. It's called bedtime on iPhone. Yeah, yeah. And put the the, the, the the bedtime like setting on there or it will basically turn the blue light off and it will dim it. It's a dimmer. Oh, yeah. That's what yeah. Mean. So you don't have that radiation of the blue light because what happens, what do most people do when they lie in bed? They just look over their cell phone. They're right. on their phone. Scroll, scroll, scroll. They're, they're scrolling while they're in the bed or like on their side. You know? And that is activating the ner- the, the yeah, neurons. You still wait. You, you, you don't allow yourself to, because the way that we sleep is that your body uh, can sense the light, the amount of light in the room. Yes. So, so obviously you want it to be as dark as possible. So if you have this blinding light in your in your face, you're not going to be able to fall asleep. And that blue light actually is, is, is more than just blinding. It's activating these neurons. So right. you're not even able to like, you know they say like shut down, shut off your brain? Yeah. You're actually doing the antithesis of this. Yeah. You're actually stimulating your brain. So it's making it more difficult for you to fall asleep, right. which as Asad talked about, then you're leading to sleep deprivation. It's Again, just... So it's, it's a, a crazy snowball effect. It's a crazy cascade snowball. So really do yourself a favor. Go into your, your cell phone. Very simple. If, if you know, it's very simple to go into settings and pick a time that you know is going to be good for you. For myself, that's at 9 p.m. I know that after 9 p.m., up until the time I go to sleep, I will. my phone is going to be in that setting where the blue light will not be admitted from the phone. It'll mm-hmm. be a soft yellow dim light. I may still check my phone. However, I'm not stimulating my neurons as much as I do as I normally would be. And I would personally implore you to try to put your phone away. Perfect. You know, unless it's an absolute emergency, you know, do not disturb unless a family right. member has an emergency. Put your phone away. Do some reading. Talk to some loved one. Yeah. You know, cherish the moments we have because you don't, you know, as much as the smartphone is, you know, has great capacity and great capabilities – it can also make you miss out on the moments, you know, yeah. more people, it, it brings us closer to those far away, but it takes us further away from those that are close to us. So really, wow. as, <laughs> yeah. as, as, as cliche as that may sound, and it's like, you know, no, I mean, it's good. It's you good know, one. as, 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 yeah. as, as, as impactful and, and, and that was my best interpretation, interpretation of Tony Robbins, but <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it is really impactful. Right. And so, um, you know, those are some tools I would say. Cool. So again, We've talked about a lot today about stress. Right. We've talked about the three different types of stress, the structural, the chemical, and the emotional. And we have like 18 podcasts. We've we got 18 podcasts to follow up on. <laughs> but, but the biggest thing, guys, is that we talked about the different types of stress, yeah. how to identify them. And then, of course, like you said, both, yeah. both of us. And we can be more – this is the first one, so uh, we kind of had a general uh, discussion. But, you know, this is about being dynamic and being – You know, we love the interaction, so – message dr sam message me about the our respective fields and stuff and and we could if you have suggestions we can make podcasts or uh any kind of uh, content that has to do with something more specific i think i think that's a great idea i think Asad said it yeah. best i think that one thing that i'd really like to tackle i think that both myself and Asad being um you know i think that one word that's thrown around a lot is entrepreneur nowadays but by the true essence of the word both of us have you know 
we are entrepreneurs. We live the entrepreneurial yeah. lifestyle. But the, and I think how are you, we? We're entrepreneurial, but we also love helping people. Yes. So. And how how do how do we, you know, how do we take care of our health and wellness and impact stress from an entrepreneurial standpoint? So right. that could be something we could tackle. If you guys are interested I mean, in that, health thing. finance. I mean, we could talk about money too, like yeah. you know, and the causing stress. But oh, yeah. Okay, okay, we need to wrap this yeah, up. We do. We do, we yeah, we're going on and on. Yeah. But the biggest thing to wrap it up, guys. Identify your type of stress, whether it's structural, chemical, or emotional stress. And, of course, there are subsets to each of those. You know, really start to become, we talked about the action steps. We'll put on here um, if you want to jump to different areas where we tackle each of them. But the action steps that go along right. with them. Don't avoid attack. Yes. Don't avoid Don't attack. Avoid, exactly. Don't avoid attack it head on. Really understand it. Identify and go after it. Grab your weapon of choice because this is something you need to overcome. If you don't overcome it, it's going to overcome you. Right. So Perfect. it's going to, you know, don't get eaten alive by the, by the stress, regardless of what it may be. But understand how to combat it, and you will live a healthier and happier life. I want to thank um, my very, very fit and very knowledgeable friend, <laughs> Asad. Thank you so much. We'll go to the gym now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he just good. This guy, I'm telling you, uh, mentally, psychologically, and physically, he is fit because he understands how to approach and take care of himself. Thank I want to thank, thank you. you. No, right. uh, thank you so much for being on. This has been episode one of The Script with Dr. Sam Rasul. If you have any questions, please direct them our way. But we look forward to more of these episodes. And if you have any other topics you'd like to see us uh, you know, tackle head on, send us a message. Perfect. Thanks so much. Right.